For many of you, making an equation will be the toughest part of elementary algebra. And I'm not going to lie, it can be really tricky sometimes. But you absolutely have to know how to do it. It shows up here, shows up in intermediate algebra, plane geometry, coordinate geometry, and even some in tray. So I'm going to talk about it in two videos. In this video, I've got a problem that I've packed as many operations and, and nuances in as I thought was reasonable. The second video covers the most common question type, which is taking some text and turning it into a linear equation or linear equations. So let's get started on this. The concept I really want to get across in this video is simple. You've got to break these things into bite-sized pieces, single statements, and build your equation piece by piece. Let's look at it. An integer x. Literally start here. I mean, that basic. Every time you can just write one thing down, write it down. Don't try to do multiple things at once. That's where you get sideways. Now, here's a, a place where a lot of people would make a mistake. Is subtracted from 10. That means x is the back number. Subtracted from 10. People would make a mistake on that for two reasons. A lot of times we say this incorrectly, even though we mean the right thing. I think almost everyone's guilty of that. But it also feels weird to write it this way, right? to go backwards. But when we build these equations, we have to sometimes go in both directions. And we have to be careful on this because order matters in subtraction. If it was addition, we could say x plus 10. But we can't because subtraction. Now, the difference is multiplied by 4. Okay, the difference is the result of a subtraction. I can't make this any simpler. So I'm going to multiply this number. This is a single kind of quantity at this point by 4. At least I can look at it that way. Now, here's the beauty of this particular problem. And a lot of problems like this, this is actually a great problem to mark off on. So get a couple steps under your belt and then run through your answer choices. Okay, A you know is wrong because uh, X and 10 are backwards. B is wrong. Now, we could distribute this, right? But it's backwards, right? C's backwards. D, I don't know where that came from. And E is the only one that fits. So right there, we know E has to be correct. A lot of times these problems will work that way. You don't have to necessarily finish them out. Please check your answers as you go on a problem like this. Anytime you're breaking things into pieces, doing things step by step, it's a great opportunity to mark off. Not only will you save time, you'll build confidence. And frankly, a lot of times people make a mistake in the back end, and then they start rationalizing. Well, you know, it's got to kind of... Don't. Don't cut, the, don't cut your answer to fit the answer choice. It doesn't work. Instead, mark off. Let's go ahead and finish this out just because of practice. Okay, the result equals, okay, well, I can do that. Equals the same integer, that means it's x. Okay, x is added to 4, and I can just put that 4 wherever I want. And that sum, sum is the result of multiplication multiplied by 3. And you'll see on this one, there's actually like A works. So there's two that works on this side, but, but E is still correct. Um, other ways that this question could be asked, you could have everything distributed. You could actually even solve this. Now, on a problem that you have like, you know, a bunch of stuff going on like this, it's not as likely they'd ask you to solve it, but this is very solvable at this point. So check out the next video on making linear equations.